just over at Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, and the Mets even up this best of seven National League Championship Series at a game apiece. Mets jump out to the big early lead. They hold on to get the win over the Dodgers by a final of seven to three. It's an off day tomorrow, and then the series resumes back here in New York a couple of days from now. So let's begin with the Mets. Backs against the wall so many times this season. We have seen it, and they respond in a big way. How did they do it today, Todd? Well, you're watching these two teams battle it out, and it's no wonder they were both one and two in comeback wins. The Mets, I think, needed to make a statement early today. I had said that I thought they needed to try to get to the early bullpen guys because if they stay too close or get uh, behind, the back of that bullpen can be deadly. They Roberts decided not to deplore those uh, real heavy, uh, you know, leverage arms. But the Mets were able to get to the guy, the the starting pitch and the uh, the starting pitching that was really of the bullpen game. And right out of the gate, Francisco Lindor really set the tone. I think this at bat uh, was an amazing at bat with foul balls. That's the culmination of it right there is a 90-mile-an-hour cutter that he deposits into the bullpen, and they're immediately up 1-0 after a great at-bat, an eight-pitch at-bat for Lindor right here. After fouling a ball off his leg, he gets one in the middle of the plate and puts the Mets up to an early lead, and I don't think there's anything insignificant about that. They had were flat yesterday. They came back uh, you know, uh, from the shutout innings, the Dodgers trying to extend their shutout, uh, ex- the, the shutout inning uh, record that they had, had tied, and Lindor said not going to happen on my watch and got them on the board quickly one nothing it was 33 consecutive innings the Dodger pitchers had not been scored upon listen one of the things we know about Francisco Lindor Gary he constantly seems <laughs> to meet the moment yeah he does and you know we talked about how this was going to be a prove it game for the Mets that they still had their mojo and what an advantage it was to be playing a day game after a night game so a quick turnaround a chance to get right back at it after getting smushed last night and Lindor just set a fantastic at bat. And, you know, Ryan Brazier comes at him with his two best pitches, his fastball and his slider. And then he goes to his fourth best pitch and throws a cutter. And Lindor got all over it. But this is what he's been doing. I mean, going all the way back to the, the Bowden Francis home run it, when he was pitching a no hitter in Toronto a month ago, he has come up big game after game after game. And I agree with Todd. This at bat by Lindor leading off the game might have been the most important at bat that the Mets have taken all year because if they go down quickly in the first inning against Ryan Brazier it sets up the Dodgers to to put together the game exactly the way they wanted to but he took the first blow and then the Mets uh, fired through in the second inning and really although they had to hang on by their fingernails at the end of the game this, this was what this game was all about, this early offense and setting a tone after getting uh, shellacked last night. Well, it did get a little bit dicey there late in the game. And again, the Mets had the big lead. It was 6-3 going to that eighth inning. They got out of it there. And then Edwin Diaz, 7-3 game in the ninth inning, first two batters on, and then he strikes out the next three batters, Betts, Hernandez, and Freeman. It can get a little infuriating at times, can it? <laughs> yes, I it thought the, the pitch selection to Kike was perfect because Kike is sitting dead red in that spot. And four straight sliders was probably the right way to go, although, as Todd said, the last one was the worst one. Center cut, and Kike just missed it. And for all we talked about Kike Hernandez before the first two games of this series and his postseason prowess, he had the two biggest at-bats of the game, the one where Maton got him to ground to the double play with the bases loaded in the sixth, and then that fly ball in the eighth that took the Dodgers out of a threat. But when Diaz trusts that fastball it has such enormous life up in the zone nobody's hitting it right now and it's it's the 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 easiest thing in the world for us to sit here and say throw your fastball more Edwin but really that that was the game plan and that that got him out of the inning striking out three really tough hitters in a row I'm just going to say we've said it a thousand times and we'll say it a thousand and one if the Mets are going to get where they want to get it's got to be with Edwin Diaz doing what he did there in that ninth inning and closing the yeah he's got to close it out and the only thing that I was going to add to it it was nice to hear Edwin say it felt good coming out of his hand it had life to his fastball he can see it at times too he just doesn't necessarily believe it until he sees it and sometimes uh, I think the, the thing that you're talking about, Gary, where it's we're sitting here like, believe it, man, believe it. And he goes out there and then starts getting with it. And then all of a sudden he dominates. So great to see him make that switch. They walk Lindor intentionally 
Vientos comes up there and he delivers the grand slam and take us through the at bat and how it unfolded. Yeah, it absolutely was the biggest blow of the game. There was a lot of quality at bats, as Francisco was pointing out. A lot of deep at bats, a lot of seeing pitches, a lot of, um, you know, making the pitchers really work and not a lot of chase. And this at bat is a perfect example of that. The thing that I love about this is he's able to fight off the off speed because he's letting himself, letting himself stay back. He's letting the ball get to him and he realizes that his fastball can't beat him. He's, he's fouled one over the top of the strike zone at 96 and he was able to stay on the other sliders, which allowed him to hit that fastball when he finally got the one center cut hit it deep and that was able to he was able to drive it to right field which he's done so so well this season great at bat great result as well in that situation Mark Vientos has got to take that personally right there you know we talk about guys taking great at bats and I think Todd really illustrated what that means it means keeping yourself in an at bat until you get the mistake and he finally got the mistake, the fastball down the middle after all those quality breaking balls by Landon Knack that he was able to spit on or foul off. And, I, I mean, this kid, you talk about meeting the moment. He has figured it out. How about a couple of stats? His sixth multi-hit game in the postseason, last met to do that, Todd Zeal, 2000. Beautiful. His 40th home run combined between regular season and postseason. The first 39, never more than one runner on base. Had never hit a three-run homer, had never hit a grand slam in the major leagues until today, and that grand slam gave the Mets a 6-0 lead.